Hi everyone, my name is Shannon Carton. I am a mental health counselor at Sarah Real Inc. And today I'm gonna to do a little video on mindfulness. Uh, it's a program that we call Rethink What You Think About Mindfulness. So mindfulness is very important because just about every therapy and tool provided by social services uses mindfulness in support of mental wellness. So it's time to get present. Um, so first we're gonna talk about what mindfulness isn't. So have you ever taken a drive, you know, maybe it's your commute home or to work and you arrive and you don't remember anything about how you got there or you've started eating a bag of chips while you're sitting in front of the television and all of a sudden the bag is empty and you don't remember eating it. So those are examples of being mindlessness. So that's not mindfulness, that's mindlessness. So it's kind of like being on autopilot. So when we slip into autopilot, we are not present in our own lives. So we can fail to hear our own bodies um, telling us things like if we're hungry, if we're thirsty, if we need activity, um, we can be stuck in conditioned ways of thinking, responding, um, just kind of doing that autopilot kind of activity. And we can get lost finding ourselves doing things um, you know, in a constant matter. So we're constantly striving and struggling and getting things done instead of actually living in the present moment. So this can make us vulnerable to anxiety, stress, depression. Um, and it should, and research is showing that the more our minds wander, the less happier we are. And some research, research has shown that the average person is on autopilot about 47% of the time. So if we think about it that way, we, we could be missing out on about half of our, of our lives. So let's talk about what mindfulness is. So mindfulness is the opposite of mindlessness. It's a conscious switching off of the autopilot, sort of taking back the controls of our attention. So it's maintaining an acute awareness of our thoughts, our feelings, our bodily sensations, and the, the environment around us. So one thing to remember is that meditation is a form of mindfulness, but mindfulness is not meditation. Um, mindfulness formally can be meditation. It's a very formal practice of mindfulness, but when we practice mindfulness informally, it's just living our lives. So just like we don't have a formal, you know, six course meal for dinner every night, you don't have to do a big meditation to be practicing mindfulness. You can use little pieces throughout the day to take it on and, and do the mindfulness in that time. At the end of this, I'm going to show you a few different ways to do that. Um, but anything that you do basically in your daily life, you can do it in a mindful manner, doing dishes, waiting at a red light, uh, going for a walk, um, pretty much, you know, anything within sort of safety, um, constraints you can do. So for example, I don't, um, imagine anybody should be driving with their eyes closed, trying to listen to something, right? So you have to be safe about what you're doing. Um, John Kabat-Zinn is a professor of medicine and creator of the stress reduction clinic at the center for mindfulness and medicine and his definition is sort of the go-to for um, anybody in the social services um, he says mindfulness is paying attention on purpose in the present moment without judgment so you need to be non-judgmental about this process so understanding and remembering these three simple components can make it easier to practice daily mindfulness and figure out ways to put it into our daily lives. So for example, in the picture that you see right now, someone's looking at the leaves of the tree, right? How many trees do we walk by every day and not really notice that kind of thing? So first we're gonna talk about um, our attention and holding it on purpose. So when we're on autopilot, we are living in our heads, right? Our attention can be distracted by a never-ending stream of thoughts, and sometimes our thoughts aren't positive. So to be mindful, we consciously and deliberately wake up and place our attention where we choose. So letting go of our thoughts is not the same as ignoring them or pushing them away. And being mindful doesn't mean we have to clear our minds completely. That's a big misconception. You don't need to get into a Zen moment where you're thinking about nothing. That's very difficult to do. So we can be aware of the thoughts that are coming in and we can acknowledge that we're thinking about them. 
but we consciously choose not to react to them, but to continue to focus on ourselves, our breathing and our experience on purpose. So the second part of the definition um, is being in the present moment. So it's somewhat natural for our minds to wander away from the present. Um, for many, it's all too easy to get stuck with playing events of the past or worry about events in the future. So mindful attention, however, allows us to be completely engaged in the present moment, in the here and now. So remember the way those thoughts make you feel is temporary. Um, and by learning to let go of that internal tension, we generate wanting things to be different or costing, constantly wanting more. Um, if we can teach ourselves to focus on accepting how we are and what we need in the present moment, that's much more useful to us. So a lot of times um, when we think about the past, it can be depressive thoughts. A lot of times when we worry about the future, those can be anxious thoughts. So when we can stay in the present moment, we can help decrease the amount of those kinds of feelings and thoughts that we're experiencing. The third is to hold our attention non-judgmentally. And this can be a hard one. Um, when we practice mindfulness, we don't want to aim to control or suppress or stop our thoughts. We just want to pay attention to our experiences as they arise and not judge or label them in any way. So we can recognize our thoughts and emotions, but not get caught up in them. So in this way, we're less likely to trigger, trigger old habits or that immediate response to, the react, to react the way we always have. It opens up a new freedom and choice in our lives, and it allows us to consider alternative responses non-judgmentally. So as you see in this little picture here, so someone's doing the dishes and they're thinking about, you know, I've got groceries to do, I've got to mow the lawn, I've got the kids meeting, I've got a vacuum, I've got laundry, I've got dinner, everything is too much, I can't handle it. And someone else is just going, oh, okay, the bubbles are warm, it's nice, it smells nice, like maybe lemon, right? So that's a totally different experience, but it's actually the same activity. So it's just deciding to do it mindfully. And we're not gonna dismiss that maybe those thoughts are coming, you know, it's probably true that you need to get groceries and mow the lawn and the kids have a meeting, but trying to not let that overwhelm you in the present moment can be helpful. So why mindfulness? Well, there's a lot of research proven benefits to your health and well-being. Um, so a lot of the um, services that people would be accessing if they have any kind of mental health concerns or even just sort of self-help type stuff um, dialectical behavior therapy, cognitive behavior therapy with mindfulness, grounding exercises in trauma care, stress management, anxiety management, crisis management, a lot of counseling ses sessions, they're all going to use mindfulness as part of their plan to help support folks that are dealing with any kind of mental health concerns. So one thing I'd like to get you to try um, is a taste of mindfulness. So this will be the first um, experience that we, not mindfulness experience that I have to, for you to try. So what I'd like you to do is find something in your home, like pause this video, find something in your home that you could use. It could be a little candy. It could be a little Hershey kiss. It could be a caramel. It could be a really small bite-sized piece of fruit or whatever it is that you have sort of easily accessible. Um, go grab one of those um, and restart this video. And so the idea behind this is that you want to put that item in front of you and imagine that you've just dropped from outer space and you've never seen this item before in your life. You've never seen anything like this before in your life. So hold it in your hand. How does it look? Take some time to really look at it, to really see it. Use your full attention while you look at it. Let your eyes explore it. Examine the highlights and the shadows or the twists or folds and see, you know, what you can find in it. What color is it? You know, is it dark? Is it light? Does it shine? That kind of thing. The next thing is to think about how does it feel in your hand? Move the item around, put it between your fingers, explore its texture, um, maybe even close your eyes for a moment and see if that enhances, enhances your sense of touch. 
If it's wrapped, unwrap it slowly and look again, look at it again without the wrapper, see if it looks any different and if you have anything that um, you notice when you do so. <clears throat> Hold the item beneath your nose. With each inhale, experience the aroma. What does it smell like? Try doing it with your eyes closed because it sometimes heightens our sense of smell. Um, be aware of anything that's happening with your mouth or your stomach. You know, is your mouth watering a little bit because you're excited to eat this item? Is your stomach growling a little bit? Are you hungry? So bring that item to your lips and then just gently place it in your mouth without chewing. So take note of how your hand knew how to wear, how and where to position it and spend a few moments exploring the sensations of having it in your mouth. So again, your mouth, mouth might water a little bit. Um, see what that's like. And without swallowing or biting it, just pay attention to how the candy or the item is, is staying in your mouth. Um, you know, see what happens with your taste buds. Maybe it's sweet, maybe it's sour, maybe it's salty. Take notice of that. Um, and then when you feel ready, if it's something that you have to bite or chew, then go ahead and do that. Um, see how that goes. See if you notice any differences if when you bite into it, if it's juicy or soft or hard. Um, and, and take that moment to try it out. And then see, you know, overall at the end of that, how was that like? right? What happened? And while you were doing that, were other thoughts coming into your head? And they probably were, and that's okay. The idea is to take that thought, recognize it, and then let it move forward. I'm going to have a couple other examples of mindfulness that I'm going to show to you um, at the end, after, at the end of this video. But just in conclusion, before I do that, um, a reminder that mindfulness is simply paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. Um, like I said, I'll have a couple more examples to show for you and hopefully you can try and find some ways to add mindfulness to your day. Thanks. So I'm just going to demonstrate um, what a mindful walk could be. Um, so a good way to start that is to think about your five senses. So what can you see? I see trees, I see homes, I see cars, I see gravel, grass, um, leaves, lots of leaves. And I hear birds, I hear a lot of birds actually. Um, I just heard a car move behind me. And I also heard some people working on some kind of project in their garage. Um, I can also hear my feet hitting the cement on the ground. Um, I can smell grass, I can smell leaves, I can kind of smell that spring, summer smell that we get. Um, you know, if I wanted to touch, I could feel some grass under my feet here. And also some gravel, which changes the sound that I hear. Um, can't really taste outside, but your five senses are usually a good place to start in terms of just figuring out how to be mindful in different moments throughout your day. So one thing that I like to do when I'm at work is when I arrive in the morning, I will be mindful from the walk from where I park my car to the front door of the building. And I noticed last year that I was much more aware of the bushes and when they bloomed and the different flowers that came up and the different colors as well as when the trees were blooming. Um, so if you just take those small moments to be mindful throughout the day, it can be really enjoyable. It also helps you relax and you know maybe perhaps calm yourself um, before, the end, before the start of the day or maybe at the end of the day before you return home to your family. Um, or even if you're just having a tough time going for a walk and being mindful in that moment, then you can use that to be present, not worry so much about the past or um, worry about the future um, and be just present in the moment. So hopefully that's one way that you can try and be mindful. It's a pretty simple one. So another option that I want to show for mindfulness is coloring. And this might be a really good one to use with your kids um, of all ages because it can be something that everybody can do together. Um, so one of the things about coloring that you can make it about mindfulness is just focusing only on the coloring at that time. So perhaps not having the TV on in the background or maybe having just some soothing music in the background might be helpful for people to focus on the coloring. Um, but the idea is just that when you're coloring, you're focusing on what color you're using, 
Maybe the sounds that the markers make as they hit the paper. Maybe the markers have a certain smell. Um, maybe you're focusing on really small details and sometimes that can help us keep on track because we're focusing so it doesn't give our brains the opportunity to look for other thoughts to come into our mind at this time. So sometimes with younger kids it's good to model this with them so you can say what color are you using? What are you going to color right now? What does that pen feel like in your hands or that marker feel like in your hands? Um, you know, do you, what color is, is it bright? Is it dark? Is it light? Is it cheery? You know, ask questions at first to kind of give them an idea of things that they can do themselves to be mindful while they're coloring. And then hopefully they can learn from your modeling and can do some of it on their own. So it's a great relaxing, calming opportunity for the whole family. And hopefully you'll be able to use it with them. I hope you got some good ideas about mindfulness and how to use them in everyday practice. Thanks for watching the videos on mindfulness. Um, Sarah Real Inc. is always here to help folks out with any mental health issues. Um, take care and enjoy trying out some mindful moments.